I don't like sand. What? I hate you! You don't have to be so mean. Okay, people, today let's take a quick look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends retro carded Spider Man No Way Home Wave, consisting of, well, Spider Man, MJ, Matt Murdock, Sandman, Friendly Neighborhood Spider Man, and Amazing Spider Man. And yes, that is branded Amazing Spider-Man 2 instead of Spider-Man No Way Home like the rest of the wave. Apparently there's some kind of likeness rights with Andrew Garfield. If you remember, the SH Figure Arts advertised their Amazing Spider-Man from No Way Home, it gets confusing, I know, as coming with two unmasked heads, but then they pulled those before the actual release. And then Hot Toys also branded theirs as Amazing Spider-Man 2. So I guess we can't have Andrew Garfield on a No Way Home card, but we can have them on Amazing Spider-Man 2 because those rights were already secured maybe or something. And I'm guessing that's also why the three pack of Spider-Mans from No Way Home didn't include unmasked heads because then they'd have to brand it as here's two Spider-Mans from No Way Home and then a Spider-Man from Amazing Spider-Man 2. And speaking of that three pack, if you go back to that review, I said that I was perfectly happy with it that I would use those Spider-Mans and get some custom heads. Well, there I was, wandering down the Walmart toy aisle, and there's the whole wave just staring me in the face. And I hadn't bought many Marvel Legends in the past few months, so I thought, to hell with it. Plus, they're cinematic Spider-Mans. They're all iconic, no matter what anybody thinks of any certain one. They have their place in history. So, me having a set that is masked, I can put that in one place, and then them hanging around unmasked, I can put that in another place, my toys. I do what I want. Looking at the packages, like I said, they're all branded No Way Home with the yellow starburst, except for Andrew Garfield. There's a blue in the background. On the back of every No Way Home package, there is a No Way Home poster. Seems kind of obvious to do, so. But on the back of Amazing Spider-Man 2 packaging, there is an Amazing Spider-Man 2 poster, again. Why wouldn't they? Then, as always, there's bios on each character on the back of the package. There's Matt Murdock, there's Amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, MJ, and then Sandman. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, no! Since these two Spider-Mans are about 95, 96, 97% reuse, and I've already reviewed each of them, we'll take a quick look at those first. It is the exact same figure as the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man from the No Way Home 3 pack from earlier in the summer. At least I think it was earlier in the summer. It was at some point in the past year. Looking at just the bodies, there's no difference. <laughs> Not really. Doing this, can you tell which one's the retro carded and which one's the three pack? Because I switched them around. <laughs> this is the retro carded. The silver web lines may be ever so slightly. Well, I don't know. Now that I get this zoomed in, look right here. It does kind of look like they're slightly thicker. And thicker means better coverage because on the first one, it was silvery. But if you would turn away because of the sculpted lines, the silver would kind of disappear like it was missing. Then you turn towards it and oh, no, there it is. On the retro card, it, it still kind of does that, but not as much. And in other places, it doesn't really look different. I don't know. Maybe it's a little bit more solid. It's definitely hanging down a little bit more at the top of the booties because, well, I don't know. Again, the line is slightly thicker and it makes it more apparent. It doesn't get lost as much in the sculpt. So there is a difference in paints. <laughs> not much. You got to go looking for it, but... Yeah, that is me really digging for differences. Before we get any further, the pointy fingers did not come with that three pack version. Crafty Gecko sent these to me for a play day and you're gonna see him again here in a minute with Andrew Garfield. The big huge apparent difference is the unmasked Tobey Maguire head. This is good. It is very, very good. I just don't feel it represents his age in No Way Home. I think this is kind of a younger look, but it works for both really because you get back here it's not a huge difference. I just feel like it could be like 2% smaller, maybe three. Another thing I said during the first review was I was worried about the figure coming off frumpy, but once I got it in hand and going back to the movie, 
Toby does have kind of that rectangle shape. It's not like hyper superhero proportions. It's just, uh, uh, you know, an athletic guy in a skin tight suit. I do wish the legs went together more. That's one of my gripes. Going over articulation, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck. Can look up and down, not quite as much as you want a Spider-Man to look, but eh, very nice tilt. And then looking for Mary Jane, looking for Mary Jane. Butterfly joint at the shoulder, but it is poppy like there's a detent in there. Peg coming out to the shoulder rotates all the way around then there's a hinge that goes up to here. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow comes all the way up. Swivel at the wrist. Hinges in and out. Dumbbell joint mid torso with a hinge down at the waist so you can crunch to there and then crunch to there. My back! Tilt side to side and then rotation. There is a slight drop down hip, then the ball rotates up to here and back and out. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee, I don't even remember where, oh, it does. With great power comes excessive butt kicking. Hinge at the ankle goes back, goes forward, then there is a front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, friendly neighborhood comes with a right fist and then a left signature wall crawling hand. That is so Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Pop those out. and then. And there are two thwip hands. Now I have seen people pointing out that in the original solicitation shots there are two fists and then two thwips and I, I, I guess but this was made for this figure. This is only for this figure. Don't get me wrong, $24 retro carded, no build-a-figure piece, it should have come with the full array of hands. The body's already paid for from the three pack, there is the new head with photo reel, but still, all the hands. Every Spider-Man should always come with all the hands. There's a reason for this to pop off too, because it also comes with a masked head that should go on there, but oh, Get on there. Behind the camera strength. Bigger reason I'm happy to get this is because the black around the eyes followed the sculpt this time. If you remember my three pack version, it missed on the left eye. Everything drifted down. The new one gets me back on the symmetry train and that's a good thing when it comes to Spider-Man. With the Andrew Garfield Amazing Spider-Man, I am really fighting the urge to say everything I just said about Toby applies here too. Because it does. The body is complete reuse of the three-pack Amazing Spider-Man. We're gonna play this game again. Which one's the three-pack? Which one's the retro-carded? Boop, 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 boop. Did you guess correctly? Getting right up on it, again, the lines may, may, may. I'm gonna have to wait until I get into edits to be for sure, but looking at my screen right here, the lines may be slightly cleaner. And by cleaner, I mean up on the sculpt better. And I, <laughs> this is the retro, this is the three pack. And again, the pointer fingers are from Crafty Gecko. Color wise, it's all the same. It has that metallic sheen on the red, same for the blue. I think this is one of my favorite cinematic Spider-Man suits because well, one, it's got a lot of webs to it, you know? It's got that spidery feel, almost McFarlane-esque. And the spider is stylized, but I kind of like it coming up with the legs and then the legs dragging down. It's the same on the back, just kind of, it's got a flow to it, you know? Always forward. But like McGuire, the big draw here is the unmasked Peter Parker head. But also like Toby, this seems like a younger Andrew, especially in the hair department. It has that mid 2010s flowiness to it. Getting five o'clock shadow vibes. I was bummed when the SH Figure Arts canceled their unmasked heads, but now that I have this and comparing pictures side by side, I think Hasbro got a better likeness. Plus I like the proportions here a lot more than the friendly neighborhood. Nothing against a older guy getting into spandex. Believe me, I have nothing against that. This is more of my idea of Spider-Man. Long, lithe, thin in places, but still muscular. But I say all this not having messed with the final swing Tom Holland yet, so we'll see. Articulation, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck. Can look up, even with that hair on the back. Looks down, well, not so much down. I wish there was more crevice in here, more opening. I understand they have to sink that ball way down there because of safety standards. I just wish like this was wider or this was thinner or something. Has some nice tilt though. Gwen, 
Captain Stacy. Butterfly joint, forward, back, pin out to the shoulder, rotates around and then hinges way up. Swivel at the bicep, double elbow, all the way up as Spider-Man should. Swivel at the wrist with a hinge in and out. Dumbbell joint mid torso, hinge at the waist, but doesn't crunch as good as Friendly Neighborhood. Arcs back just as much though. There's that tilt action with some rotation. Drop down hip with a ball going out to the leg, rotates up to here and then back and then out. Swivel at the thigh, double knee comes up. Oh yeah. Hinge at the angle goes whoa, way back, then forward, not bad at all, and front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, there are two thwip hands, then there is a right fist and a left uh, angsty McFarlane-esque hand. Again, this was sculpted specifically for this figure, but me saying that doesn't hold a lot of weight because all the hands for this figure was sculpted specifically for this figure because of the web pattern. So again, 20, well, I said 24 a minute ago, didn't I? Or did I? Either way, $25 retro carded, no build a figure piece should come with all the hands. Does come with the masked head though. And I don't think I noticed it the first time, but this is my three pack version. <laughs> again, it's kind of hard to tell. I got to keep them separated with the pointy finger. You can see the left eye missing again. On my retro carded one, it's up on the eyes and the lines come to the center. Yeah, this is improved. Taking a look at Matt Murdock next, I haven't been buying a lot of the suited figures lately, but for some reason I felt compelled to get Matt after initially going, I don't need a suited Matt Murdock. Again, I think it was the head. It's not perfect, but it's closer than what we've gotten before. You gotta admit the resemblance is better than this one. All forehead looking like the face slid down the skull somehow. I think it's the glasses throwing me. Could be barely bigger. The rims not as round. They're close, but not as round. And then the lenses should be slightly darker. I mean, we saw his eyes behind there in the movie, but not this much. This comes off as <laughs> rose tinted glasses. I do like the five o'clock shadow, that fits. For the rest of the body, it's a suit. And like I said, I haven't been buying a lot of the suit characters, but I have identified most of the parts. A lot of it is still reuse from Coulson. And how old is this figure? The tie, the jacket torso overlay, the shirt underneath, which is the body, and then the crotches. Mr. Knight came along and gave that same body new legs, which was much improved because Coulson always had a problem with standing up. You couldn't get the ankles to go forward much. The Mr. Knight legs, because they're angled up right here, gives the older shoes much more range of movement forward and back. So Maddie has no problem standing up. The only thing I can't identify are the arms. They're not Coulson's, there's less sculpt, less wrinkles. They're not Mr. Knight's, <laughs> if you could see it in that bright white. He uses the uh, Captain Marvel Nick Fury arms. Foggies are thicker. I know it's happy, but he was foggy at one point and they go together. So I'm not sure if they're reused from some figure I didn't get or if they're new or if they are from a figure I have that's in a tub somewhere, I don't know. I can't get the tie to straighten out. I guess I gotta hit it with some heat. Although that is kind of a Matt Murdock thing to do, right? I mean, just off to the side, don't care. These are my work clothes. I'm ready to be Daredevil. Oh, spoiler for those of you who don't know. Going over articulation at the top of the neck, there is a hinge with a ball going up into the head. There is some movement at the bottom of the neck inside the shirt, but I think that's to swap necks between characters so they can use this suit body for a lot of different people. Can look up, can look down, some tilt. Object, sustained. Pin coming out to the shoulder, rotates around with a hinge that comes up to there. Swivel at the bicep, double elbow, surprisingly comes all the way up. I just noticed the elbows are pinless too, so they have to be from either a newer figure or new for this figure. Swivel at the wrist with a hinge in and out. Hinge at the mid torso, crunches, arcs back. Swivel at the waist, ball coming out to the hip, swings up, swings back, swings things out about the same as the rest of the Spider-Mans in this wave so far. Swivel at the thigh, double knee, oh, most of the way. It's a little thick back there, but not back there. Hinge at the ankle goes back and forward, even with the pants leg coming down and a front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, Matt comes with the mobility cane with the black handle up here, the loop to go around the wrist, and then there's a rubber foot on the end. Just a nice, unique item. Then there's the brick that gets thrown through Peter Parker's window. You can see the red of it on the ends and then wrapped in newspaper, comes around to some very, somebody's angry. We believe Mysterio.
Oops. For MJ, it's another case of me not knowing if a lot of these parts are reuse or brand new just for this figure. I have the two-pack MJ, and a lot of that body was Jessica Jones. But the details don't match the new figure, I say, as I put them side by side and realize that the legs are reuse. Here's all you gotta do to trick me. Paint the sock white instead of black, and I think they're a brand new footwear. Hasbro, you didn't paint the buckle on the new one, you painted the old one, what's going on there? So okay, that's the mystery of the legs. Once you get above that though, they don't match. The retro carded figure's pants ride a little higher. And then obviously the arms are completely different, she's wearing this bulkier sweater. Wade's gonna hate that with the white showing through, but in normal position, you can't see in there. The arm peg going into the torso though is gummy. You saw a minute ago when I tried to put the arm down, it just kind of flexed. I have to push up and then hinge it in to get the arms down to the side. The torso overlay sweater part is not flexible at all. You can barely pry it open to try to see if the torso is reused, but I can't tell. Well, okay, does anybody have that collar? Is that the same collar? Once again, you change colors. <laughs> Like, oh, what? It's all new. Okay, I don't think the abs match, but the upper torso does. It doesn't matter though, because you'll never see it. It's covered under that sweater. I like the proportions on the new one though. I like the sweater. It, I don't know, it translates better. Did paint the buttons though, so okay. That's a little extra mile. Also, the stripes on the sweater aren't bad at all. Up at the head, it's definitely not reuse of this one, but the two-pack MJ also came with an alternate head that I have misplaced somewhere and I can't seem to find it. Side by side with a picture though, she seems to have that same serious, determined, could be confused for angry, but not quite look on her face. I think it may be the same sculpt with a different paint application and then of course different hair on top. And I'm gonna say this is a good likeness. The eyes, they nailed the eyes. You know the biggest way to tell if this is reuse? There's a hinge right there. The newer figures have dumbbell joints for the most part. So this is matching, there you go. I also wanna point out the sculpt of the hair. The braids, very nice looking. Back to the ponytail, hanging down with some lighter brown dry brushing on top. This works. Completely. Going over articulation, there is, well, I just showed you, there's a hinge with a ball going up into the head. Ponytail is flexy, so it gets out of the way of up, and then she can look way down. Eh, not bad tilt. You're not, Peter. Neither are you. Pin coming out to the shoulder, rotates around, and then hinges up. Oh, okay. That part of the sculpt right there tends to catch on the torso. If you push down a little bit, thanks to the flexiness of the peg, you can bring it up further. That's not me making excuses for gumminess, but it does work in its favor. Hinge and swivel at the elbow comes up past 90, even with the puffy sleeve. Then rotates, swivel at the wrist with a hinge in and out. Dumbbell joint mid torso hidden underneath that overlay does get nice hula hoop action. Ball coming out to the hip, comes up to there, goes back none, and then out, swivel at the thigh. Double knee, again, a big determining factor that these are reuses is that there's pins. I don't know why I didn't look at that a minute ago. But Double knee comes up all the way. Bow, 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 bow. Hinge at the ankle goes back, goes way forward, and then front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, MJ comes with two fists, and those can be replaced with relaxed hands, gesturing hands, or holding hands, depending on what you want to use them for. Because she also comes with this, the big, reason for no way home, I forgot the name of it. Very, very nice sculpt. The outer sides are very Doctor Strangey, and then the inside is a different plastic, giving it kind of a patina, a metal aged look. But it looks good being held in those alternate hands. Next up is Sandman, and I'm gonna go out on a limb and say I do believe that this is all new sculpt, unless there's somebody else out there that looks like Lumpy Oatmeal. Basically, this is just naked guy with rough texture. At the same time, that's what he looked like in the movie. Was it cheaper to do this rather than constantly DH Thomas Hayden Church throughout the whole movie? I don't know, I don't work in the movie industry. I just know that this made him more dynamic at least, and I like having him represented in plastic form 
but it doesn't make for the most exciting figure. Thankfully, there's accessories to spruce them up, but we'll get to that. Probably sooner rather than later, because I don't know how many other ways to say, hey, look, here's your basic human form <laughs> with some roughness to it. The feet do look like they're piles of sand, though. It kind of bulges out on the sides in places, and there's no toes, so it, it's just kind of a lump there, a foot-shaped lump. First glance, these paint hits are just kind of there, just kind of <clears throat> Definitely for here, it's used for shadow on the pecs, but up here, it's more just to give a difference to the s <laughs> sand. I'm gonna say it again, sand. Sand, sand, sand. And there's even some on the back. Not much. Uh, well, it, in fact, <laughs> that's all there is right there. This intrigues me though. This is better than I thought it'd be. You can kind of see the likeness there, but there's also, is it sad? Why does this make me feel emotions? <laughs> and this won't come as a surprise to anybody, but I, I do like this more than I thought I would. It's a sand man to go with my Spider-Man stuff. That's exactly what I wanted. Articulation-wise, there's the newer dumbbell joint at the top of the neck. Can look up, and now that I've got a close-up to the profile, I, is that John Cena? Dumbbell joints have a problem with down, though. They don't want to open up at the front because that's the part you see most of the time, so not a lot of down. Always great tilt with these, though. Never mind. Thanks for asking. Pin coming out to the shoulder rotates around with a hinge that goes to here. You can see that crashing because there's nothing in the way. But if you push down slightly, you can get the shoulder in there and it raises up to there. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow. Ooh, all the way. Swivel at the wrist with a hinge in and out. Wonder what's at the mid torso. <laughs> there's a dumbbell joint there that can crunch forward, arc back, tilt, tilt, some rotation. Ball coming out to the hip, up and back and out. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee. Oh. <laughs> Hinge at the ankle goes back and forward and then front facing pin for rocker. I haven't actually done this so let's see what the accessories can do to make this shine a little bit more. Out of the package there are two fists. You can swap in the menacing hands. <laughs> these are what I wanted to see. There's these sleeve pieces that go onto the bottom of the arms and at first I thought what the hell? There's no peg. How's it stay? And they are marked. There's L1 and there is R2. You just put them on there. And then the big sand hands have extra long pegs to go through and... Okay. Yeah. That works. Not as sprucey as I was hoping for, but it definitely jazzes it up. I think... Once again, coming back to the face. He can get all stretchy and stuff, but then he's just, you know... Kinda, well, here we go, I guess we're gonna fight. Angry Head would've went a long way here. If you have this comic book Sandman, you can take the hands and plug it into the MCU Sandman sockets, but you can't use the cover pieces. The pegs aren't long enough to go all the way through the sleeve into the arm. That and the color is just barely off. With a little modding though, anything is possible. And then finally, my most wanted of the wave, the Tom Holland final swing Spider-Man. And I went on and on about how the Andrew Garfield costume was my favorite of the cinematic Spider-Mans because of how comic booky it felt. Or maybe I said that in the three-pack review. It's all running together at this point. But the final swing costume takes that to another level with the brighter colors, the toned back logos. Yeah, it's a bit sharper than what we're used to seeing in the comics, but hey, it's still a little logo on the chest. Same situation on the back. It's a bit more menacing. He's a menace! But I feel like it fits the overall scheme because all these webs go zhoop and the spiders point in the same direction. And then all the web lines are spread out a bit, like classic comic book Spider-Man. They are raised, barely. It is very, very subtle. In fact, it's hard to even feel it, but you can catch it. I think that makes it easier to put paint on because if you put it to the side, then you can definitely see it off the ridge. If this misses, like right there, 
it's hard to see. It's definitely not as noticeable as the other two. Got a V at the top of the boot on the front and on the back. I'm not sure if those painted lines are supposed to go around the edge, but those are a little low if they were supposed to. Then there is a texture to the red. Again, very, very slight, very subtle, but it's nice because it kind of spices up the dullness of that red. You get to the blues and it is smooth, but there is almost a metallicness to it. There is a sheen. Now, as far as the accuracy of those colors in the movie when he's swinging it goes from very dark parts to very bright spotlight shining on them. So one minute it's dark and then the next it's very bright, almost tealish, greenish blue. I'm gonna go with the material that was sitting on the sewing machine and that is pretty dark but shiny. I feel like this is a nice compromise, an in-between color. Kind of simulating the city lights shining off of them. You could also display them in the dark and, well, it's hard to do here, but yeah, I'm gonna say it's fairly accurate. The unmasked head is nice to get because it wasn't included in the three pack, but it is not a new sculpt. It was included with this Peter Parker in the two pack with Ned Leeds. No, not this head. It was an alternate head. Same sculpt, updated paint job. There is absolutely nothing wrong with this, but this feels a little more natural, like they tuned the photo reel a little bit better. And then the hair is slightly lighter. It's got a dry brush of brown on top. Overall, I like the proportions and more than that, Hasbro fixed the size. I didn't keep up with Holland's height throughout the movies. All I know is that he is now listed as five foot eight. So when I first got this out of the package and compared it to an older Spider-Man, I thought, holy hell, why'd they make him so big? Then I brought in the Tobey Maguire figure who is also five eight and I realized, oh, Hasbro brought him up to almost the same height. He is still just slightly shorter, but it's much closer than the three pack. The hands are a little large proportionally, but yeah. Then you bring in Garfield, who's 5'10", and this seems way more accurate. I'll get a better look at this in size and comparisons, but I wanted to go over it while I was holding Spider-Man himself and the Spider-Mans. And while I have it laying here, this is the exact same height as the Peter Parker figure. So these two, are perfectly matched. They're perfectly paired. Paired Peter Parkers. There is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck. Allows for some up and again, down is hindered. Tilt is the star of the show with dumbbells. Peter two, Peter three. Butterfly joint at the shoulder goes back, goes forward. Pin going to the arm rotates around and then hinges up. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow all the way up. In fact, there's still room for movement because you go here, you can bring the bottom joint up to there, which is better than a lot of single joints. Swivel at the wrist with a hinge in and out. Same as the other Spideys, dumbbell in the middle, hinge at the waist. This comes to here and then this comes to here. Still not as good as McGuire, but still crunchy. And doesn't arc back as far as the other two either. Give me some of that tilt side to side and then rotate. Drop down at the hip with a ball going into the leg, rotates up to here and there is a little bit of flexi. I don't see anything stressing but I get to here and it just wants to drop back down. Back and out, about the same as the rest. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee, same situation as the elbow. The top joint goes past 90 and then you just continue on with the bottom and it comes all the way up. If it wasn't plastic, it would go up his ass and probably on through. Hinge at the ankle, goes back, goes forward. Front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, there's fisticuffs, there's the whip hands, then there is good old traditional wall crawling. Like the rest, the head comes off and there is a masked head. A masked head that is tough to get on. I have the power. And this head is very interesting. Like I said, out of all the cinematic Spider-Mans, this is the closest to classic comic. And the masked head is no different. This wouldn't look out of place on a cover from the 70s. If I had one gripe, it'd be wanting this line that goes down under the chin right here, just to kind of fill in this space. If you shake it around and look real close, it looks like a mouth on bottom or just some empty space. Web, 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 kind of hollow. You get back here and that's always the test. Put it on the shelf. Oh, it's not that big a deal. Height-wise, Matt Murdock is six and an eighth. Tobey Maguire is about six. Tom Holland is about five and 15 sixteenths. MJ is just slightly over five and three quarter. Andrew Garfield is six and an eighth. And Sandman is six and a quarter. That works for the most part. Like I said, Tom Holland and Tobey Maguire are about five eight. Andrew Garfield and Charlie Cox are about five ten. Thomas Hayden Church is five eleven. And the one that throws everything off is Zendaya because she stands at five ten. So 
she should be as tall as Andrew. But I also understand in the movies, they can be any height they want. They can make him taller, him ta shorter, whatever. So going by the actor's heights is just a baseline for me. What it comes down to is relative scale. He should be taller, shorter, this, that, or how they're portrayed for the most part. Like I said, Hasbro's given Holland a little more height over his older figures, and then MJ's actually lost a little. But bring in Ned and Happy, and this totally works. This is the display right here. And the unmasked Holland head does fit on the three-pack body, so you can do this. Here's Sandman with a couple of Marvel Legends comic Sandmans. Most exciting pain apps ever. Finally, there's Matt Murdock with Jessica Jones and the Marvel Legends Netflix Daredevil body under the Mezco 112th Collective Netflix Daredevil head. I just like that a lot better than the Marvel Legends version. Oh yeah, and here he is next to She-Hulk. So at the end of the day, even though I have everyone posed like it's a group photo for the yearbook, book, I am excited to have all these characters. Now granted, I already had the three pack, so I already had a costumed up Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire, and then quite a few Tom Hollands, but there's more options here, and that's pretty much the unmasked heads. Hasbro did a fantastic job of capturing the likeness. They did go for some in between their own movies and No Way Home, but it still works in the overall scheme of things. Civilian Matt Murdock wasn't on my list. <laughs> when it was revealed, I was like, okay, that's cool, but I want a Daredevil in the yellow or a new regular Daredevil. When I saw this on the peg, I was already getting the rest of the set, and that was gonna be a display, and I don't have a Matt Murdock for my MCU shelf. I have Peter Parker's, I have a bunch of other out-of-costume superheroes, so I figured, what the hell. Sandman I wanted just for the sake of having Sandman from No Way Home, from the MCU, and like I talked about when I was looking at it, it's not the most exciting, it's dude looking like a big chicken nugget, but it still works because that's what he looked like in the movie. Do I wish there was a lot more attachments? Yeah, but ooh, I need some 3D print stuff going on because that would be pretty easy to paint, huh? I like this newer version of MJ over the old one because, well, I guess it comes down to that sweater. It just adds something that I don't have on the shelf. But my most anticipated was Final Swing Tom Holland and it doesn't disappoint. Could it be more Spider-Man-y? I think so, like toe joints or legs coming up further, more crunch, I don't know. The only thing I do know is that I enjoyed these. I do feel a tinge of regret with the three pack, but like I said, there's display options. I can display those all masked up over to the side, over in their own thing, and then these guys are hanging out with the rest of the universe. I, there's options. Because if I just bought this Garfield or this Maguire, I could only display them one or the other, masked or unmasked. So I'll probably leave these guys like this and then take, since both of their masked heads were better than the masked heads I got with the three pack, those will go on those bodies and then I'm happy. <laughs> it's hard to make me not happy, but I'm happy. I think this is my main display Holland though, cause man, can't beat that costume. I, I feel like I grew up with that costume and it's taken this long to come back around to it with what I see in the movies, you know? So that is very, very cool. It's like a return, a back to basics. And I'm excited to see where that goes. And I'm excited to see where I put these because I've got to move some stuff around to actually get them in the display. But, oh, the trials and tribulations of being a collector.